Hello everybody, so after it was mentioned in the previous video where Mr Jason Beer Casey kind of put Jan El Singh on the spot regarding his private business that he's run since April 1996, uh, Jason Judge Solicitors, I thought it'd be interesting to have a look into, you know, the background, the public records of the company. Now, notably in his CV, he didn't include the word LTD or limited on the end which means that it might not have always been a limited company, but certainly from the way he was talking about it, I got the impression that this was always a company and that this was what the Law Society suggested. Uh, but the only record of Jason Judge Solicitors Limited that can find at Company House was one that was incorporated on the 15th of December 2022. So some years after April 1996, you know, what are we on there? 26 years later. And obviously he did suggest that he was only really referring people and doing bits here and there post 2000. So hopefully this is the right company. It's certainly owned by a John Ail Singh. If we go to the people involved, John Ail Singh here is listed as the director. He's currently active and he was appointed when the company was formed. Uh, in terms of who has control over it, he, he owns presumably 100% of it. He's the only director. And if we pop back here, they have got some uh, filings overdue, but there is a proposal to strike off the company. Now, obviously, Jar Nail Singh that, uh, is a solicitor. The nature of this business is solicitors and management consultancy activities. So that ties in with what he said to the inquiry. He appeared at the inquiry at the end of November uh, 2023. Uh, it does say there's an active proposal to strike off. If we look at the filing history, there was an application made to strike the company off the register. So in a sense, dissolve the company, stop it from existing on the 16th of January this year. And um, so if we look at the documentation for that fairly standard striking off notice sent to company's house by Jar Nail Singh, uh, declaring that I, we as the majority directors apply for the company to be struck off the register and declare that no circumstances described in those sections of the Companies Act 2006 exists in relation to the company as in there should be no objection to it uh, all interested parties are notified the company will be struck off and dissolved the register will proceed registrar sorry will proceed unless there is reasonable cause not to do so non-dissolution and the assets remaining in the company will be passed to the crown fairly you know it's, it's a standard striking off notice interesting timing so this has now been published in the gazette as of 23rd of january so that people can object for example if a company still owns money and it confirms that upon dissolution all property and rights vested in are held in trust the company are deemed to be bona vacantia and will belong to the crown there's only one set of accounts that's been submitted uh, for the company it's not really been in existence that long so that's as expected and if we look at the accounts okay there's not really a lot of money in it. It's kind of suggesting overall, net net, after they've taken into account the money that they owe, 8,696, that there's only 11,516 of current assets, which leaves over £2,820. Uh, so that would tie in with him saying, really, there's there's not a lot of work. I don't do a lot of work through it. What is somewhat perplexing is what the structure of the company was then prior to this, from April 1996 to till December 2022 when the company was formed. If we have a look at Jan Nail Singh's current and previous appointments, so there's Jay Singh Judge Solicitors Limited, which we've just looked at now. His occupation is a managing director. Uh, there's also Singh Judge Property Management Limited, which was where he was appointed on August 2021. So if we jump into that, the company was formed on August 2021. So again, it's fairly recent. It's a concern with buying and selling of real estate. Well, I guess that's not surprising considering he's a conveyancer by trade. And in terms of the people, there's two directors of this, including Jan Ail Singh. Okay, if we look at who controls the company, it looks like it's possibly a 50-50 split. More than 25%, but less than 50%. And again, after its formation, there's one set of accounts. If we look at them, a bit more money in this company on the face of it in terms of assets but once you take into account the creditors so it's assets presumably a property uh, 210,867 but the amount they owe within one year is 215,279 so net net that leaves 2044 well minus 2044 which is what the bracket signifies so a loss they're actually down in money compared to what they 
started with. Next business is one called Hopton Tech Limited, where he was appointed in September 2022 and resigned in February 2023. Let's jump into that one and have a look. So the company itself is dissolved. It was uh, started in February 2021, ceased to exist on the 20th of February 2024, which appears to be six days in the future. Wonder whether that's a typo. Uh, there's one, two, three directors of this, including Janel Singh. Uh, it seems to be owned by another company, Hopton Capital Limited, although they don't appear on the um, director's list, so presumably it's not a wholly owned subsidiary. In terms of Hopton Capital Limited, which was a, a entity of significant control in the property business that John Ailsing was listed as director of, um, that started in August 2019. If we look at the people involved in this, there's some commonality with those involved in the property business, but John Ailsing isn't listed as a director here and indeed isn't listed as being a person of significant control in the company. It's got slightly more extensive history than the property company, which has been wound down. If we have a look at the latest accounts, there seems to be a bit more money in this business. 2022, it had net net 210,522. 2023, it was down to 54,697. So we've kind of reached the end of the line on that one. And if we look at the final business, Tudor House Law Limited, uh, where he was appointed in February 2017, resigned in October 2018. If we have a jump into that. So this company is still active after its incorporation in 2017, but John Ail Singh's involvement ended in 2018. Look at people, we can see he used to be one of the directors, there's only one of the director. Jan Elsing didn't have any significant control over this, or certainly doesn't now. If we look at the filing history of the company, you see here it says accounts for dormant company. So that would suggest that actually this company's never really traded. And indeed, if we look at the latest accounts, essentially, when you set up a company, you have to distribute the shares, purchase them in the set. So there's 100 shares of £1 each. And essentially the business's balance 2022, 2023 has just been that £100 that's been paid in. Doesn't look like there's any expenditure or anything on that. So it looks like a totally dormant company, to be honest. Maybe sometimes this happens when it's set up with a specific purpose and it doesn't work out or you decide not to continue with it. And that's the four companies listed under John Elsing's name. So as we can see, the earliest reference to any of them and his involvement is 2017 so presumably his business dealings prior to that were operating as some form of unincorporated entity but certainly J Singh Judge Solicitors Limited as now is was only started in December 2022. The interesting thing here is the bespoke law services company that he mentions being a director isn't actually listed here. So I had a little dig about, uh, firstly, from the Law Society, which you mentioned, they have got a list of bespoke law services saying it's not an SRA regulated law practice. Presumably a lawyer will be able to shed more light on that for me. I'm not tr sure of the implications behind that or why some law companies may choose to be SRA regulated or awarded that kind of status versus not, but it's not an SRA regulated company. And if we have a look at Bespoke Law Services UK Limited, Okay, that was started in October 2013. Uh, it's uh, still an active company. If we look at people, there's nine directors, but there's been five resignations, so four current directors um, at the moment. Um, one person who's involved in that Tudor Law Limited as well, which seems to be dormant. But if we look at all officers, we can see John Ail Singh did hold an appointment here. The reason why it didn't seem to come up in the initial search is it seems that his first name and his second name have been inverted. So his first name has been put as Singh and his second name as Jarnail. But when we have a look into this, it seems that's only happened once because there's only one record at Company's House related to Bespoke Law Services where his name has been inverted. If we look at the dates here, 2016 to 2018, they match what he's put on his CV for this one. This is occupation as director. If we look at the filing history for it, the latest accounts in 2023. Show that it's doing pretty well. Net net, the profit 299,821, comprising the gross profit of over one and a half million, but there's administrative expenses of 1.2 million nearly. So the operating profit's 373,000. They've paid the tax, corporation tax on that profit, which has left 299,821 in the business compared to 327,731 the year before. 
if we try to have a look at the accounts around the time of Jarnail Singh's departure, so these accounts up here were made up to October 2018, so really pretty much up to the end of his involvement and a bit beyond it. If we look at those, see if there's been any significant changes in terms of revenue. Well, we can see the gross profit certainly spikes up a lot since that is left. There was only 40,362 left after tax. In the business in 2017, 111,508, so it seemed like it was picking up a bit. And if we look back to his appointment, see why his name was inverted, it does look like it's always been inverted, maybe a mistake on the paperwork. So appointment of Mr. Singh Jarnail, which I'm guessing should be Mr. Jarnail Singh as director on the 23rd of August 2016. And if we look at this, his name's listed as Mr. Singh Jarnail, presuming that was just um, an administrative error. So that's it. That's a bit of a history of J. Singh Judge Solicitors Limited in any case. Like I say, presumably it was an unincorporated entity that he was running beforehand, although I kind of took from his testimony that I thought it was an actual, like, incorporated company being run. And also kind of looked at the other businesses that he's been involved with, which only seemed to stretch back to around 2017. So I just thought it was interesting to add that context to what was said at the inquiry for a bit of further information. Uh, so I hope you found that useful.